Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. So a few of you have asked to see my overclock settings for my Intel i7 5960X and how I got to 4.5 gigahertz. Now I do have to say, um, obviously settings will vary depending on what your processor likes. Obviously there is no one size fits all. So I'm literally just gonna honor your request and show you the settings I used. This is not a guide in any way. This is literally just to satisfy your curiosity. So I'm going to go ahead now and jump into my BIOS and show you the, show you guys the settings I use to achieve my 4.5 gigahertz overclock. Okay, guys. So this is my BIOS. Um, I'm using my iPhone 5s to record. So I do apologize for any shakiness. It's the best I can do at the moment. So I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. What you want to do is go through to the overclock settings. That's where you will be doing most of the work. So first you're presented with a choice between simple and advanced which is pretty self-explanatory. Simple hides a few options, advanced gives you pretty much full control which is the option I've selected. Um, so you go down to your CPU ratio which is basically just adjusting your multiplier. In my case I wanted 4.5 GHz so I adjusted it to 45. It does give you a readout of what your CPU will be running at. Then you get CPU ratio mode. This allows you to alter between fixed mode which just keeps your CPU at uh, one set speed or dynamic. Dynamic allows you to use pretty much Intel speed um, step and turbo boost which allows you to adjust your CPU speed and save power and keep it running cooler when not under load. Um, this can cause um, stability issues um, so it's something I tend to leave off and I'm not too interested in power saving as when I'm not using my PC I usually have it turned off. Now ring ratio is an interesting one and um, you can increase um, this close to your CPU um, multiplier speed. It does in game sometimes increase um, your minimums FPS but generally it doesn't really affect performance and it does increase your temperature so I've left this at stock which is 3 gigahertz. So CPU base clock BCLK um, it's always running at 100 which is stock. You can use this to increase your CPU frequency but I found that this comes with a number of side effects which can basically make some of your hard drives not show up um, it alters your PCI Express speed lane so it can cause stability issues with your graphics card something I tend to like to leave alone but you can get some joy by overclocking your BCLK DRAM frequency is just basically depending on your memory speed I have um, I use my XMP profile, you have two profiles, one runs at 2400 MHz, one runs at 2666 MHz, I'm using the fastest XMP profile. Latency is 14, 16, 16, 35, all running at 1.35 volts. Okay, moving on to uh, VCCIN voltage, so VCC in voltage, this is the voltage what you need to have um, your CPU at a certain voltage to actually boot and get into BIOS and Windows. Now this does vary depending on your motherboard. Mine usually runs at 1.850 or 1 1.9. I've locked at 1.850. The main one is your CPU core voltage. Now I've got mine at 1.305. Most people would recommend not going over 1.3 and if you do not to go over too much because you may start to have some CPU uh, degradation over time. Um, I use um, basically just the override mode so it stays at 1.305 but you can have it at adaptive and offset modes depending on what you want. Obviously if you want to have your CPU running um, at the highest voltage when you're under load and uh, some reduced voltage when you're not using it that's an option for yourself. Again this can cause instability issues depending on how high your overclock is and basically what your motherboard is doing. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, there is one more thing I can show you which is CPU features. I tend to have Intel C state disabled because this just basically controls a whole host of power saving options which I'm not interested in. Um, I disable it for maximum stability. So that is pretty much all of my settings. Hyper threading is on. Active processor course, um, core control is just allows you to control what cores you want on and off so when you see me simulate things like the i5 and i3 this is the option I have enabled but when I'm using my CPU as normal I have it disabled because I want to have all 8 cores and 16 threads at my disposal 
so that is pretty much it if you were interested in my settings there you have it I'll give you a quick glimpse of stability and temps and um, that is pretty much it for the BIOS obviously it goes without saying that when it comes to overclocking this will increase temperatures of your CPU so you do need to make sure you do have adequate cooling available to stop that in my case I'm using the Corsair H110 IGT that's a 280 millimeter radiator all-in-one cooling system which does a good job of keeping my CPU in decent temperatures even at 4.5 gigahertz I'm going to quickly show you a situation when my PC is usually at its highest load and uh, this is usually when I'm creating content for my channel so I've got my Adobe Photoshop open Adobe Premiere with some 4k Tomb Raider gameplay I've just captured which I used in my last video so uh, while editing at 4k so I'm going to quickly select my 4k preset usually my CPU is under 90 to 100 percent load so I'm rendering this file now at my 4k preset now I've also got the task manager open so you can keep an eye on CPU usage as you can see that's 100% at the moment so CPU on a very very heavy load and you can also see the memory getting utilized as well comes to temperatures temperatures usually range between the low 70s and high 70s they don't usually ever breach 80 degrees Celsius so perfectly safe and perfectly stable looking at usage now 17 gigabytes used and 98 percent CPU usage so very very heavy stress test this is pretty much it when it comes to showing you my settings for my 4.5 gigahertz overclock um, again temps did remain between 75 and 79 on very very high load um, obviously when gaming this will be considerably lower and you probably won't even breach 65 degrees so um, hopefully this has been interesting to anyone that was interested in how to get your CPU to 4.5 gigahertz and again this isn't a guide this is just me showing you my settings so that's it for me guys hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching